Our lesson on the mole continues with a topic known as the molar mass. How much do I weigh out to get one whole mole of a certain ingredient? I don't care if it's atoms, if it's molecules, if it's ions, if it's formula units, whatever those particles are that we're weighing out, how much to get an exact number of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd? The tools I will need out for my lesson today is page 3 of my notepad, kind of sharing with you the top of page 3. We'll also need our periodic table and polyatomic ion chart as we will be writing formulas as part of our objective today. And another tool would be our calculator. The mole map, again, is really starting to explore how do I convert from moles to mass, just really kind of first steps with our mole map conversion. In our mole map, if I were to place that under, so far we have practiced the world of counting to the world of Avogadro, right? Going from the number of particles into the mole, dividing by Avogadro, or if given the mole, we head out by multiplying by Avogadro. The next step is exploring, just kind of a first opportunity to begin exploring how we convert from moles to mass, or mass back into mole. We know that as a chemist, the chemistry actually occurs down here at the individual particle level. I mean, that's really where chemistry occurs, is those interacting particles as bonds break and new bonds form, reactants to turning to products, but impossible to actually measure by counting as a chemist. We can weigh something out and know exactly how many compound units we have through the mole. The mole is a counting unit, so we begin to explore how we go about counting by weighing. And you can see on your, your mole map here the term molar mass. How much do I weigh out to get one whole mole of a substance? And as we begin to explore that, we see that there's some different vocabulary words. If I'm weighing out atoms, gram atomic mass. If I'm weighing out molecules, gram molecular mass. And if I'm weighing out formula units, we have a gram formula mass. The vocabulary is different simply to model what type of, of particle we're weighing out, but the process really is the same. The mass off the periodic table represents in a gram unit how much to weigh out for one specific mole. So let me flip to a PowerPoint slide that will show us some of our vocabulary we'll go through and record. The mass of one mole, either if it's atoms, formula units, or molecules. Let's begin with that first vocabulary word that appears on the top of page 3 in our note pack. The number one question under the letter C, the mass of a mole of an element. The gram atomic mass. Please write with me. The amount of an element needed to weigh out exactly one mole of atoms of that element. Pause the video if you need to take time to write that completely. I don't want to get too far ahead. GAM, the mass of one mole of atoms. How much would I weigh out if I'm counting out atoms? The gram atomic mass is the mass of one mole of any element, the basic building block of matter. We'll be asked to find for carbon, for hydrogen, and for sulfur. So let's consider those modeled. Now would we have our definition recorded? If we now realize that we're being asked to solve for carbon, hydrogen, and sulfur, the tool we simply need out is our periodic table. If we find carbon on our periodic table, 12.0107, if I find carbon's gram atomic mass written in a gram unit, we have found, and again, remember, I like to have two decimal places. It's a good habit to get into. 12.01 grams of carbon, the gram atomic mass of C, carbon. Notice I have a number, a label, a unit every time. The gram atomic mass of hydrogen. Now an atom of hydrogen is a single atom of H. 1.00794. What would that look like with two decimals rounded correctly? 1.01 1 .01 grams of hydrogen. The gram atomic mass of sulfur. 
We find sulfur on the periodic table. Carrying two decimal places is a good habit. 32.07 grams of sulfur. Number unit label. If we're weighing out an element, elements are built of atoms. The gram atomic mass, abbreviated GAM, rewriting or just kind of repeating what you wrote here, the gram atomic mass, the amount of an element needed to weigh out exactly one mole of that element. Elements are built of atoms, they have a GAM, gram atomic mass. Let's define the term gram molecular mass. GMM is its abbreviation. The amount of a molecular compound needed to weigh out exactly one mole of molecules of that compound. If the particle you're weighing out is indeed defined as a molecule, they're groups of non-metals covalently bonded, you hear prefixes in their name, we call it a gram molecular mass. But we're going to find that gram molecular mass in the same process. The individual atoms added together to give me a combined total weight. Let's solve for sulfur trioxide, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide. And again, we'll go to the periodic table to help us do that. To find for sulfur trioxide, we need to start with a formula. Listen to the prefixes. Sulfur trioxide is written as SO3. Now when I combine these weights, one sulfur plus three oxygens, I'm going to really do an addition problem, but I want to find the mass of each one. So let me just show a little extra work as we become a little bit more efficient. I want to show the work at first. One sulfur with a weight of 32.07 grams. In oxygen, if we find it off the periodic table, 15.9994, that actually rounds to 16.00. But there's three of them in our formula. Three oxygens added to a sulfur, and we find the sum of all atoms combined. 32.07 plus 16 times 3 for the contribution of three oxygens and we get 80.07 grams, the gram molecular mass of sulfur trioxide. Letter B, how about the gram molecular mass of hydrogen? Now let's emphasize something here. In the previous example it asked for a single atom of hydrogen. Now we're being asked for a molecular mass of hydrogen. What's the difference? Do you remember my funny little sentence? Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. Remind me that in nature there are seven naturally occurring diatomic molecules. Molecular hydrogen, H2. Atomic hydrogen is just an H all by itself. So the molecular mass of hydrogen, two units of H is added together, would give me 2.02 .02 grams of molecular hydrogen, H2. Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. In the last example, the gram molecular mass of carbon dioxide. Again, carbon dioxide, hear those prefixes? One carbon added to two oxygens. We don't need to show the work. I was just kind of getting an idea of how we sum the individual atoms contained in a molecule. You can simply do that directly on your calculator. We're going to need the mass of one carbon plus the mass of two oxygens all combined together. Carbon with its contribution to the total of 12.01 plus oxygen's contribution, 15.9994, rounds to 16, so we'll double 16 times 2, and we get a molecular mass of 44.01 grams. If indeed we are weighing out molecules, we have a gram molecular mass. 
How much do I weigh out to get a whole mole of a molecule? Weighing out atoms, gram atomic mass. Weighing out molecules, think prefixes. These are molecular compounds that you hear prefixes in the name for. What about gram formula mass? Well, let's define that into our notes and we'll copy this phone down. The gram formula mass, the amount of an ionic compound needed to weigh out exactly one mole of formula units of that compound. Gram formula mass, think charges, that when I start writing out formulas, I need the charges to balance electrically. See, my math is only as strong as my formula writing skills. One of the most common mistakes um, beginning chemist students make, chemistry students make, is that they incorrectly write a formula, therefore they incorrectly add up a molar mass incorrect, and then the whole, the whole mole problem falls apart. So we just want to be real careful in paying attention to charges for ionic compounds. GFM, a gram formula mass, formula units, that repeating crystalline structure called a salt, gram formula mass, think charges when you write out its formula. And let's practice for the following. So here we're going to take a look at sodium chloride, ammonium carbonate, and potassium oxide. Think carefully about charges as we write out their formulas. We're going to hook a sodium, who's a plus one, to a chloride, who's a minus one, and we come up with NaCl is our representative particle of sodium chloride, a plus one balancing a minus one. To find the molar mass, called the gram formula mass, since it's building, it's building up formula units, we need the mass of one sodium plus the mass of a chlorine. And I want you to carry two decimals as the habit to get into. Now sodium, 22.9897, correctly rounded, is actually 23, 23.00 if we include the two decimals. Plus the chlorine, 35.453, carrying two decimals, 35.45. And that sum of one Na and one Cl is 57.45 grams the mass of one whole mole of table salt. Do you know what? I think I did. I had a calculator mistake. I just stared at that and realized I accidentally typed 34, but I need to repair that to be 35.45. So my correct answer after my mistake has been fixed, 58.45. Can you repair that with me on your page? There we got her. Here's one called ammonium carbonate, ammonium carbonate, a compound built of ions. Both happen to be polyatomic ions. Here's my positive ammonium. Here's the negative carbonate. When ammonium hooks to carbonate, we form an ionic compound. It's a ternary ionic compound built of two polyatomic ions. Ammonium I think I'll write this larger so I don't have to squish that in. Ammonium is NH4, carries a plus one charge. Carbonate is a polyatomic ion, carries a minus two. We need to take two groupings of the positive ammonium to electrically balance the one unit of carbonate. NH4 taken twice, CO3, ammonium carbonate. How much would one whole mole weigh? Now keep in mind this two outside the parenthesis distributes through. So when I'm counting, there's actually N's, H's, C's, and O's. We all have to add together by the time we're done. Keep in mind there's two N's, there's eight H's, two times four is eight H's, there's a single carbon, and there's three oxygens. Each individual atom needs to be summed to get the entire weight. So back to the other side, we find molar masses for ind individual elements here. So nitrogen, 14.0067. I'm going to call that 14.01. Hydrogen, we said, 
1.01 .01 by the time I'm done rounding with two decimals. Carbon, exactly 12.01. .01. And oxygen rounds directly to 16.00. Two nitrogens added to eight hydrogens added to a carbon added to three oxygens find the total formula mass for this ionic compound. Two times the weight of 14.01 plus eight times 1.01 .01, that's hydrogen's contribution plus one times 12.01 .01, that's carbon's contribution plus 3 times 16.00 and the molar mass of 96.11 for our formula unit. So I'll just transfer that here. 96.11 grams of NH4 taken twice, CO3, ammonium carbonate. Two nitrogens added to eight hydrogens, added to a single carbon, added to three oxygens. And one more in this round. What is the gram formula mass of potassium oxide? Potassium oxide. Potassium with its plus one. Oxide with its minus two. Think about charges as you build formula units. Your math is only as strong as your formula writing. Potassium oxide is K2O. We'll have two potassiums will have a single oxygen. Let me find potassium for us. 39.0983, that actually rounds to two decimals correctly, is 39.10. The sum of two potassiums and an oxygen, let's hit that together and see if we get a common answer. I found 94.2 grams, and I'll just transfer that over here, 94.20, to get rid of two decimal places, 94.20 grams. And that includes my two decimals that we're trying to get in the habit of. So we can count atoms, we can count molecules, we can count formula units. If we count atoms, we call it a gram atomic mass. If we count molecules, gram molecular mass, and if we count gram formula units, GFM. The mass of one mole of any compound is called the molar mass. Now I want you to pause this video here, and I want you to work the section one review problems. And when you've completed them and are ready to check, start this video again. Listen clearly to the directions. Pause, work ahead, then check. Pause, work ahead, then check. Please don't cheat yourself out of the practice.